Hello there friends and welcome, for today's guide we have at last a return to Pathfinder because we just got a new and quite special patch 2.20. It's one of the biggest patches yet with many new changes, including even new mythic feats, abilities, new spells and items. I'll soon get into covering the new abilities and spells, it's just that I'd rather do them on a separate guide after this one because we have quite a lot of ground to cover. For this guide, I want to focus on the actual patch changes, so the nerfs and the buffs. As we do have a few fixes or nerfs that change the way a few builds worked in the past. So let's get started, shall we? And of course, there's a lot of bug fixes as well, but I'd rather focus into the mechanical changes. And here we are, classes and mechanics. Animal companions no longer learn indomitable mount feet or can pick mounted combat feet. Okay, this is just silly, but before, for some reason, they could pick mounted combat feet despite the fact you cannot have an animal companion ride another pet. As amusing as that sounds. Archon's aura can now have persistent metamagic, quite the welcome change after all. It is one of the best aura debuffs in the game to reduce enemy stats by just, well, existing near them and does bypass spell resistance as well, perfect against demons. And this is just for flavor, but the Blood Kineticist now has new animations for its abilities. The Dumpier Crow Romancer unique class, commanding fusion ability now gives plus 4 to charisma instead of constitution, nice because, well, it's all about summoning undead who don't benefit from constitution, rather they get extra hit points and saves from charisma. Crusader's Edge and Blast Weapon now work with the Enduring Spells Mythic Ability line. Quite good as well, because they are some of the best buffs in the game, especially Crusader's Edge, so having it on 24 hours is always nice. Now this is a pretty big one, the Expanded Arsenal Mythic Feat now correctly counts bonuses, so the main issue with this Mythic Feat before is that it essentially allowed you to stack multiple bonuses from multiple schools of magic to one of them. For example, let's say you wanted to be the strongest necromancer possible, so you would want the highest DC for your necromancy spells. Because of the way Expanded Arsenal used to work, for some strange and very counterintuitive reason, you would not want to get spell focus in necromancy at all. As a matter of fact, you would much rather get spell focus into all other schools of magic besides necromancy, the main one for your character build, because the more spell focus you had in all sorts of different schools, the more of a benefit you would then get to apply to necromancy later when you finally picked Expanded Arsenal. Nowadays I'm pretty sure it's capped to just a single school of magic, right? So no more plus one from necromancy, divination, transmutation, conjuration, all other schools besides the ones you want. I personally think it's a welcome change, because like I said, it was very counterintuitive, and even for unfair, if you're going with the best schools of magic anyways, like enchantment, you do get more than enough bonuses to spell DC. Plus, of course, you also have many ways of debuffing enemy saving trolls by massive amounts. The spell specialization feat now includes mythic spells, another quite welcome change because the best mythic spells have uncapped damage based on your caster level, and spell specialization does just that, increases your caster level even further for more damage, so of course, the most OP mythic paths of them all, Merged, Angel and Lich, are the ones that will become even better through this. This is a pretty big change as well, the requirements for taking certain bloodlines have been reworked. For example, you can no longer take two different draconic bloodlines, which is a very big nerf to blaster casters, I'm afraid. As each of the dragon bloodlines increases your spell damage essentially of a different elemental type, and before, you could stack multiple ones that increase, for example, fire damage, there's three of them total. In a way, I'm kinda sad to see this change, because... Well, I understand, according to the tabletop rules, the dragon bloodlines are not meant to stack, but I'm also pretty sure in tabletop you don't fight enemies with higher than a thousand hit points on core. Anyways, what I want to go with this is that the so-called blaster casters, that is, the ones that are focusing to damage, have always had a much harder time in CRPGs, basically, than crowd control or DC casters, because they have to put a lot more effort to actually dealing high spell damage, as opposed to just stacking spell difficulty class bonuses. 
you need high caster level, you need better spells, you need gear bonuses. After all, it is one thing to either instantly kill or call to control all enemies into submission with one spell, or have to deal damage. While under Demonic Rage, you'll now gain immunity to Daze, Paralyze, Petrify, Frighten, Stun, Confuse, and other conditions. This is interesting because I don't recall this ever working before. But well, the more immunities you get, the better for you. You can now choose Persistent as your favorite meta magic. also another very welcome change because... Well, this is a mythic ability, right? Which reduces the spell level required to apply meta magic. But for some reason you couldn't really apply it to all the meta magic feats, especially the new ones added in Wrath of the Righteous, like, well, Persistent, one of the best ones, of course, to ensure enemies will fail their saving throws against your spells. Chain Lightning spell now deals a maximum of 20d6 damage, also another very big nerf to blaster casters, I'm afraid. So the Chain Lightning spell was unique before in that, while the description said the damage was meant to be capped at 20d6, and it now is, it was uncapped, right? Which means the higher your caster level, the higher the spell damage. I'm also not much of a fan of seeing this go, just like the Dragon Bloodline stacking, because like I said, it's a nerf to what's already a worse caster playstyle, in my humble opinion at least. Not just that, but this is also a direct nerf to the Azata mythic path, who could spam multiple hitting chain lightnings because of your ZP magic ability. Now they'll deal way less damage, and well, in a game where you have Merge, Angel, and Lich as the top tier mythic paths, that can do everything with no effort whatsoever as early as chapter 3, I just don't see why indirectly nerf the other less powerful choices. I'd rather they just change the description to let you know the spell could deal more damage than intended. Anyways, this nerf to Chain Lightning with the Dragon Bloodline nerf, well, it just feels like it's more reasons not to bother with anything but Merged Angel and Lich, at least as far as optimal power. But I suppose the Demon Mythic Path at the very least still has some nice bonuses for casters. And Azata is still great for crowd control as well. It's just, as always, spell damage that suffers. Speaking about other very big changes, the Oracle, Nature's Whisper, and also the AC bonus of Scaled Fist Monk will not stack anymore. In case you didn't know, both Nature Whisper and Scaled Fist Monk let you add your Charisma modifier to Armor class when unarmored. And well, because Charisma is already one of the strongest stats in the game anyways, especially because of classes like Oracle, you could get quite a lot of armor class from just this, especially because it only costs a single level of Scaled Fist Monk anyways. That will not work anymore. While this may seem dramatic, I don't really think it's that much of a big change anyways, because, well look, there are so many ways of increasing armor class in this game, <laughs> trust me, there's a lot. You can still achieve very high armor class even without this, Plus, as I always say, I do think AC, people tend to overrate it a lot. If you want the best defenses in a game like Wrath, you want multiple layers of defenses, not just AC, it's AC, Consumant, Damage Reduction, Temporary Hit Points, only when you fully stack all of that together, including some abilities like Protective Luck Hacks, that is when you have a truly powerful defensive character. Which, like I said, can still be done just fine, especially because, as I'll cover later, we now have feats that enhance armors. The Sun Form spell now correctly calculates damage for its race by adding the Angel's Mythic level to the caster level. Quite a powerful change as well, because, well, you can enhance the damage by an extra 10 dice. And Sun Form has always been one of the ultimate Angel Mythic spells anyways, because it increases your deflection by a massive amount, equal to your Charisma bonus. Plus, it can be cast as a swift action for the offensive part that is the Ray Fired, so you still get to attack and cast another spell at the same time. At long last, the nauseated effect applied by the Phantasmal Web spell now works correctly on creatures immune to poison, thank god. I always wanted to make an illusionist character that would be focusing to spells like this, except before it was rather useless because, well, demons are all immune to poison, and the Phantasmal Web spell, while a great crowd control effect, it didn't work on demons because for some reason... If the enemy was immune to poison, they'd also be automatically immune to nauseated, which is not the way it's meant to work. Nowadays, that's been fixed. So get ready for illusionist builds. The Angel's Sword mythic ability 
Speed of Light no longer stacks with haste. Kinda disappointing because it was one of the main appeals of the ability, but it's still free quick and spell for any spell up to level 7, which is huge on its own anyways. Arcanist Exploit Wooden Flash ability no longer makes you a plant, which of course could grant you immunity to a lot of powerful stuff like mind affecting. It's still a great ability regardless because, well, it is a stacking form of natural armor class. Archmage Armors no longer triggers from items. Also, quite a big nerf for the <laughs> naked pajama tank builds, just like the removal of scaled fist stacking with nature oracle. Because before you could just grab the Archmage Armor mythic ability on any character, then drink a Mage Armor potion and you would get the effect, which is quite powerful. Now it seems you have to directly cast a spell yourself, which of course is more annoying because you'll have to multi-class with a spellcasting class. Azata's supersonic speed no longer stacks with haste, also disappointing because, well, that was essentially the main reason of picking it. Because haste, in a game where you have the abundant spells, line of mythic abilities and enduring spells, which means you can eventually have 24 hours haste, you'll never run out of haste, right? So why bother with supersonic speed? It's just all I'm saying. You can always rely on haste. Azata's incredible might ability now works not only on weapon attack and damage rolls, but to all attack and damage rolls. This is quite interesting. And yes, it will apply to spell damage as well, which is at the very least a buff to Azata blasters. If you're wondering about the multiple bloodline stacking, it's because the character already had them before, but nowadays you cannot do it anymore, as I explained before. Even better for tasty Hellfire Rays, of course, because of how many times you can proc it. Disrupting Weapon Spell now has a correct DC for saving throw, also nice, because before, I'm pretty sure the DC used to be static. For those that don't know, this is a spell that lets you instantly kill undead enemies on hit, if they fail the saving throw. And well, if the DC is working correctly now, it's a lot more useful, although we don't fight that many undead in the game, compared to demons at least. Mutagen and Cognatogen effects could stack fixed. Okay, so while you cannot stack the Cognatogen together with Mutagen, you should still be able to stack Mutagen effects together with the Azata Mythic Path, as I've just tested, because of Azata's second breath and also the Heroes Never Surrender spells, which do restore your abilities. That is, by casting it, you get more uses of Mutagen, which of course means you can then stack it on top of each other. Who knows for how long, however, right? The Molten Orb spell now has the bomb trait added. I'm not sure what effect this actually has. The Crane Wing trait worked if the character had a weapon or shield in the second hand, or the weapon was held with a two-handed grip, fixed. Well, this is certainly another nerf to, once again, the super high AC naked tank builds. Speaking about that, the Hex Shaman's Chant ability mistakenly extended the effect of the Protective Lux spell. Well. Okay, so this is interesting because it won't work for protective luck. For example, let's cast it on Devran. It's three rounds by default at my level. And if you use Chant again, well, it won't increase the duration, right? It keeps ticking down. However, for the secondary amazing effect, that is from the Fortune Hex ability, which is actually more limiting than Protective Luck, because, well, you can always spam Protective Luck on any character but the caster as many times as you want. Whenever you want, it's infinite uses, there's no cooldown. Fortune Hex, however, does have a cooldown of once per rest per character. On the other hand, it is still increasing duration just fine from Chant. For example, we have 30 seconds here. Camellia uses Chant again, and there we go, 34. <laughs> So I'm not sure if it's just an oversight and they forgot to also apply this limitation to fortune hacks, because, like I said, you can just spam protective luck as many times as you want anyways. Books that provide bonuses have received an item highlight, very good, because you could easily miss these items before, you would have to read every book you find, and the bonuses they can provide you are quite good, really, per character. Mephistopheles is now immune to Baleful Polymorph, Kinda sad, I still remember turning the Skyrim into a helpless dog with Amber's Animal Servant Hex. I guess you can't do that anymore, on Mephistopheles anyways. The Undead Stalton Companion, which is unique to the Lich Mythic Path, 
has had his characteristics and build change. Well, I probably have to make a new save for this because all my Lich saves are after he's already joined the party, but he used to be the Undead Companion with, well, let's say the least optimized build of them all. I'll be sure to check what actually changed later. And lastly, for some quick item and gear changes. I think the biggest one is the fact the Book of Dreams will now update as it should. In case you didn't know, this is a special item. It works for any character, although it is a Zata thematic, that can add quite a lot of powerful upgrades to your summons, except before, it was stuck as just the first upgrade. Nowadays, it should receive the new ones, which of course helps. The Elixir of Transmutations, which is an item that increases all your stats by a plus two, will now apply an alchemical bonus instead of inherent. Well, I'd say this is a nerf if your character is an alchemist or a vivisectionist, because it's gonna clash with your mutagen. On the other hand, for other types of characters, it can help because inherent bonuses are very rare, regardless. Boots of Free Rain now protects against the Cemento effect. Okay, but I can't really recall many demon enemies in the game having Cemento. They also protect against Tsunami, which does help because the strongest demon caster in the game loves spamming Tsunami, the desolating Galo Storm caller, that is. The Bound of Possibility Mythic Cloak now doesn't give a penalty to Trickster, okay, but it's still one of the weakest Mythic Cloaks, I'm afraid. The Clemency of Shadow Ring summoning ability that summons spiders whenever an ally dies will no longer work with some abilities like Last Stand, so no more infinite spider summonings. However, it still works when the summons themselves die, so you can still have quite a lot of spiders, more than enough, certainly. Well, so this was it for the biggest, newest patch yet for Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Of course, my next guide will be all about the new abilities, including mythic abilities, feats and spells that this patch also added. Lastly, for my third guide, we'll cover all of the new 15 archetypes added in the latest DLC for the game, The Lord of Nothing. So stay tuned, because there's a lot more Pathfinder content coming. As always, if you found this video useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and consider becoming a channel member if you can. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching, see you next time, friends!